Toaster Project was one man's endeavor to make a toaster from scratch, mining, collecting, and assembling all the materials himself. Thinking the cheapest toaster he could find would be the easiest to reverse engineer, Thomas Thwaites went out and bought a four pound toaster in 2010. But when he took it apart, the Argos Value two slice white toaster had 400 component parts made of about 100 materials. His toaster, he decided, would be pared down to the most basis components, steel, mica, plastic, copper, and nickel. Starting with steel, he'd have to go mine some iron. The closest iron mine to him was Clearwell Iron Mine in the Forest of Dean. That's 139 miles away from him in London, on the border of South Wales. He called him up, they said come on by, and he took a train on down there. The mine's a visitor attraction now, but it was an active mine from the Iron Age to when it closed just after World War II. Turns out the mine man Ray misheard him over the phone and thought that he was going to make a poster, not a toaster, and <laughs> not that he was going to extract iron ore. He was like, mining isn't just like a casual activity. You're going to need to take a long underground train ride, and you're going to probably need pneumatic drills and explosives. That was the first wrench in the program, but after a good amount of pestering, Ray took Thomas down in the mine to have a look. And he ended up leaving with a suitcase of iron ore. In his book, The Toaster Project, Thwaites writes, So I didn't mine the iron ore myself. Ray did, some years earlier. He took it from one of the displays at the end of the tour. Then he had to learn how to smelt it, but modern books on metalcraft assume you got modern stuff. So with the help of the first western book on metallurgy, Dyer Metallica, <laughs> well he looked into it and figured out how to make a makeshift furnace. Interestingly, that book was translated to English from Latin by the 31st president of the United States, Herbert Hoover, and his wife. Instead of brick and bellows, Thwaites furnace was made out of trash can and leaf blower. But instead of getting workable iron out of it, he got what's called pig iron, which smashes into pieces when you heat it up and try to shape it with a hammer. So he found schematics online and was able to turn a microwave into a little forge. And it was able to turn that pig iron into workable iron when it was set on high for about 25 minutes. Next it was on to the copper. This time he drove 288 miles to the Isle of Anglesey, <laughs> sorry, in North North Wales. This time he met a retired geology professor there who let him take home some water. The water had dissolved copper in it like this river called the Rio Tinto in Portugal. And with it he did some homemade electrolysis. And with it he was able to cast three copper pins for the electrical plug. Then it was off to Scotland for mica, a good insulating material for the heating element. He found some in a rock face and traveled some 475 miles back to London town. For his plastic shell, he reached out to BP and asked if they would fly him out and give him a jug of oil. But they never got back to him. Presumably they were busy not preparing for an upcoming oil spill. So he decided to try to make some plastic from potato starch. He whipped it up in his kitchen and poured it into a mold he'd made from a tree trunk. But he had to leave it out to cool and cure, and it ended up cracking all up and getting eaten by snails. But he thought, we live in the Anthropocene, and future geologists will mark our time by the buttloads of plastic found all over the earth. So he went to a recycling company in Manchester and mined up some plastic. He cooked it up, and it came out of the mold looking like this. And with that, he had all of the toaster's component parts. Altogether, he traveled some 2,000 miles, and it cost him about 250 times more than the Argos Value Range 2 Slice White Toaster. He ran it through a series of two 12-volt batteries, and it was capable of warming the toast, and he burned his finger on it, but not toasting the toast. And when he actually plugged it in, it did do about 5 seconds of real toasting before <laughs> the element melted itself. So he considered it a partial success. What do you think? Also, Thomas Thwaites is the same guy who did the Goatman project that I talked about on November 10th. Also, also, his book about the project was a quick fun read and I'd recommend it.